Okay, so today I'm going to go over the basics of uploading videos into YouTube, managing the rights on uh, who can view it, when they can view it, etc., and also adding um, captions. Now, YouTube does a basic, what they call a machine translation, which is it attempts to listen to the audio and translate it into um, uh, a lower third text translation which could be picked up by like a, a screen reader or anything else, but it's not very good. So I want to warn you if you think that it's going to like solve all your, vi your video problems for um, you know, closed captioning, it will not. It still requires you to go through and actually listen and write down what they're saying, like actually have somebody transcribe it. We'll talk about that in a minute. But so it's going to be over those three functions, and I'll keep it pretty open because if you guys have a question, just go ahead and raise your hand, ask it. You don't even have to raise your hand, just blurt it out, whatever you want to do. Um, because I know that there's probably not enough material for an entire hour for me just to demo. So I'd like to talk about it, and you can ask your questions and talk about instances you had a problem or whatever. So uh, getting started, I'm logged into YouTube. Uh, I went ahead and did that. Uh, it would normally show up here in the corner sign in. It's your usual Gmail account or your school uh, Stumail account, which is a, a Gmail account. You can use either one. I like using my personal one, um, even if it's for work. Uh, that way I can easily manage it. It's something that I'm, I'm always logged into. I'm always logged into, G, uh, into Gmail, so I don't have to like log myself out and then log back in. But once you do log in, and it, if that confuses you guys, it, this is part of the Google suite. Google owns YouTube. It's the same thing. So. You could even find yourself logged into Gmail and then scoot over to YouTube and you'll notice you're signed in, even though you didn't even sign in. It's called a, like a bridge portal. So, any, sure. Forgive me, but are you saying we can, on campus, that we can't access it from our jcc.edu? It has to be from Stumail? Everybody here has Stumail or at least a Gmail account available to them. Uh, I don't know if you have to activate it. I can't remember if that's the case. Um, you do, okay. Uh, but you have to use that as a, as a sign-in into YouTube. Your JCCC account is just like a, uh, a Microsoft, uh, yeah, exactly. That won't work. It okay. will not. I just want to be sure. Yeah. Uh, so you can sign in. Um, you know, Gmail accounts are free to make. If you want to make your own personal one, I recommend it. They have lots of great features in Google Apps. And this being probably one of the most popular app, uh, YouTube. So the thing that you'll probably land on is just that regular YouTube homepage. And some of your personal stuff's a little bit hidden. You actually have to hit your name up here at the top. Close the annoying ads that are flying by. And you'll get this little drop down menu. And it'll show you like some basic things, your favorites, watch later, likes. Those are like personal things. You know, if you're watching YouTube videos, you can save them to watch things later on. But what we're interested in is the video manager. I'm using a different email, I have a few different Gmail addresses, so I have no videos in here. I just didn't want to have all my personal home videos up. Um, like nobody wants to look at 300 dog videos. Um, so this is what it'll probably look like the first time you use this. And it's uh, eventually going to fill up with videos going down. It'll, there'll be like a thumbnail, some information. You'll be able to like click a little down arrow and do some things like delete them or copy and paste them, whatever. So this is what you land on. And what we want to do first is upload a file. And I've actually put a file here on the desktop. It's a video that Bob Epp and I made for um, floral design uh, for that department. And I'm going to upload it. So you click the upload button. And it brings you, it used to be much more complicated than this. This is very simple. It allows you to drag and drop. It even says down at the bottom, drag and drop videos anywhere onto this page, start uploading. So I'm going to do that. Now, you might ask, what kind of video files can you upload? I typically say use MP4. Most cameras nowadays, your phone, your iPad, your little handheld digital recorder, typically is recording in MP4 format because they know you're going to put it on YouTube eventually, or like they hope that you're going to put it on there. So uh, especially iPhones and iPads, they record in MP4. But there are other supported formats that you may have. Maybe you recorded something a few years ago. Maybe the Ed Tech Center made a video for you. Maybe video production made a video for you. You want to put it up. Um, 
these are the supported formats. Uh, WebM files like VP8s, MPEG4s, what I just said, MP4. AVIs uh, being like the Microsoft AVI format. Uh, MPEG PS, I have no idea, it's an MPEG2 type file. I don't know what records that. Uh, WMV uh, Windows movie vi or media video or something like that. And uh, FLV, which would be your old standard flash videos. Uh, that's actually what YouTube was originally built on was the FLV format, but MP4 took over as being the industry standard. So if you want to search for this, I just simply searched uh, YouTube supported formats and it brought me to a Google support doc showing that. So it's pretty easy to get to. It was the top hit, I believe. Go back. Yeah, top hit. So, so anyways, MP4 is probably what you're going to end up using. You're going to grab your file on your desktop, your hard drive, off your camera, um, wherever you have it stored. You drag it in and drop it. And immediately it brings you into uh, a few text fields to describe what it is you're uploading. You can ignore that. You can just go ahead and continue and let it up, uh, upload. If you, may not, you may not have any kind of descriptions ready for it, a title ready, or anything else. But something you want to immediately notice is this. Let me scroll over a little bit, is the privacy setting. And that's kind of the important thing, because if you're not ready to show everybody, and I mean everybody in the world, uh, you want to make sure that you want to change this to either private or unlisted. And the difference between the public is obviously public. Everybody in the world can get to it. Uh, there are some certain countries that can't get to them, but uh, like China and a few others, but, uh, but pretty much everybody else in the world can. Unlisted and private, though, uh, are, are similar but yet different. Unlisted means that nobody could search your video. So if you say, my favorite dog video is the title, and people are searching my favorite dog video, uh, they would never find this unlisted video. But let's say I shared it with your friend, and then they shared it with you. You would still be able to get to that video. It's unlisted. You couldn't search for it, but they could give you the link for it. So that's unlisted. And then private means that only you and people you choose to view the video can do that. And there's an interface for doing that. So um, I'm going to talk about that private one, because I think that's used quite often on campus to share things with other uh, you know, coworkers, other faculty members, whoever. So um, I'm going to save the changes. I'm going to leave this all normal, because I don't have a special title for it or description. Um, tags, descriptors of what the video is. So I could say flowers. I could say um, mixed. And I can do like an underscore, I believe. Um, watch me butcher the word, OK. And again, and uh, I could say um, JCCC, all kinds of different stuff. List it out. It helps when people are searching, find your videos. It helps, like if you say flowers JCCC, and this is set to private or to public, people could probably find it. It may be pretty far down, but eventually if they keep on adding things in, if they said, you know, flowers JCCC bouquet, then they probably would find it pretty fast. So this will help your people find the video if it's set out to public. Obviously, if it's set to private or unlisted, those don't mean anything. What does that underscore mean? Uh, it's not between mixed bouquet, but not between flowers. Maybe. No, I wanted to keep mixed bouquet as actually being one, one, unit. one unit. Yeah, I think that's the one. I've, I'm a little rusty on my, my tagging. There's a, a few things. There's like colons. There's a bunch of stuff that you can use to separate to make sure words stay together, words stay apart. So um, you can always look up, I think, oh, OK, well, that's unfortunate. But you can look up YouTube, tag, YouTube tags uh, and probably find quite a bit of documentation on how to properly tag that way. So uh, you'll notice that it, it auto saves some of these changes I've already made. Uh, the only one I would make sure that you just go down and click Save on quickly is if you want to make sure this is private. You want to make sure that's saved. Otherwise, you could walk away from it and it actually didn't happen. And then your private video is now everybody's video. So, and how that's happened quite a few times. So you can see that as I'm doing all this, it's actually processing the file. Uh, it's uploading. I've got one minute remaining. It's going to vary on your connection, whether or not you're at home or here, or how much traffic there is. but. Uh, I think it's a fairly lengthy video, and um, it's trucking along pretty fast from here. 
It just switched to processing your video. And this means that it, what it's doing is, is basically taking your information, it's like putting it onto the page, it's doing all the important things so that people can view your video. And it gives you the short link to it too. Short link means that it's not like www.youtube.com slash and then a bunch of other information. It's the utu.be and then the, uh, the short, um, I don't know what kind of code this is, but just like a random scattering of letters and, and numbers. So it gave me an update on this too. Uh, see, this is taking longer than expected. Your video has been queued and we press. So apparently there's probably a lot of people uploading videos right now. So I would ignore that. It gives you a little check mark to close it. And you can go to the page where it's going to reside at. You can see that it's being processed. So obviously there's nothing. I can watch, but I can see the things that I added to it. Um, actually, I can't, can I see? Yeah, I guess when it's processing, you still don't even get your tags or anything else. So, you know, in order for us to proceed, we'll probably have to wait a minute. Hopefully it'll snap up. But while we're talking about it, I can show that you can also edit information once you've left that page. You can always go back. Um, something I didn't do was show the category uh, people on blogs. I don't know how important that is, especially for private videos, but um, typically here we always switch it to education. Uh, it just keeps it that way. If we have actually a YouTube account that's actually uh, an official JCCC video account, uh, we use for all the official like classroom video stuff that we want to put out to the public or any kind of advertising stuff, and we get extra stuff for education accounts. Um, it allows you to attach certain course information to it, possibly a link to handouts for a class, but that's something that you won't have access to on your own because you're not a .edu yourself, though you work at one. Um, an ed tech center analyst, like this fellow here, could help you do that. Um, but as it is right now, it's just a category. It's essentially like a hard like choice category tag. So. Uh, also, now I can see the privacy settings. I'm able to uh, enter in the email addresses for people that I'd like to share it with. Remember, I said it's a private, which means that only I and who I choose can see it uh, are allowed to see it. So I would actually add in here, prefer. Sorry, because I thought you had it so in the privacy menu, I can allow people on Flexboard yes. to view it, but they couldn't when I signed in. That is right. Okay. Yeah, they actually have to log in. So you would add in their Gmail email addresses in here and just you know just a long list you know you could have like you know go ahead it doesn't have to be a gmail address or could, there, could it be a different address i have never done it with anything but a gmail address i assume that it's going to want you to log into the gmail portal um that would be the only way i would assume for it to be able to track that otherwise you could maybe it sends an e it does send an email out to the sharing email uh, somebody could forward that to somebody else, you know, and, and just type in their address. So that wouldn't be very fair or, or safe at all. So you would type in an address for each person that's there? The email addresses for each individual I'd like to view the video. And only they would be able to log in and view said video. So. It is, yeah, it, it, they can use a, a Stu mail account to do that. So if you want to share something with a, a group of students, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or if a student wants to share a video with you, they could do the same thing. You would have to log in. They would either have to type in your Stu mail account or your uh, personal Gmail account. Yeah, so the caveat would be they have to activate their Gmail portion of their account. Yeah, you, yeah, you have to go to my.jccc.edu and, and activate that. Uh, I can go back to that in a minute if you want to see where that's at. No, no, I, I know that it, it, you know, it doesn't, I was told they were required to do it, but I assume, or you can use it, but you had to activate your Gmail, is that right? Uh, but you have to log into your MyJCCC. I, I know that I had to. It wasn't automatically uh, activated whenever I first went to it. I was, you know, I tried logging in. But students may go through uh, an earlier process that I don't know about. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you'd add in those email addresses, uh, and that's and that's who can see it. Uh, otherwise, um, I mean, obviously somebody could set somebody down at their personal computer and show them the video. So it's not completely private, but it is to an extent. Um, 
Also, one other thing, uh, the YouTube standard license um, in the Creative Commons, uh, uh, we have a lawyer here that might be able to answer more about that, uh, but it, it's mostly, you're basically saying that YouTube rights apply or um, the Creative Commons, which is, I'm not sure which version of Creative Commons they use, and I know there's a few different variations, but it basically means that it's free to use for people, to take your media and use it in their classroom, to use it in whatever it is. Uh, the attribution, I don't know what that is, so uh, I would definitely read up on that. that it's your legal rights and, and your materials, so you should be aware of that. Um, the YouTube standard license uh, applies that they can't take your material and use it, but YouTube has special rights to use your stuff if they so want to. So be aware. And also, if you add videos in, while we're talking about license, licenses and rights to ownership, um, say you use copyrighted music in there or things, there are bots inside of YouTube that search for copyrighted music being used. They can listen to the tracks and actually hear the music. And then when that's found, you'll get a flag saying that you're using copyrighted material that you may not have rights to use, but you may. You'll have to basically say, I have the rights and prove it, or they'll start sticking ads at the beginning of your uh, videos. So, and what happens is, is the people that are basically searching for those um, uh, copyrighted materials have made a deal with YouTube say, well, if you're going to use my music and you're not paying me for it, then I'm going to get ad revenue through your video. So it's just a way for them to make money back on stolen audio. And it happens a lot. That's a, that's a defense, not a right. I mean, it's, it, oh, for triggering it? That's, I don't, I would not rely on that. And like anything, anybody saying like you can use a certain small portion of something, you know, is, I mean, it really is just a defense. It's not like a, a, a right that you have, it's a defense in court. So I would steer away from that. There's so much free music available. Uh, search Google, tons of it, you know. Uh, stay away from top 40 hits, for sure. Um, so there's also some advanced settings here, um, less typical. Uh, obviously, 3D video is not something that everybody does, but it's available. Um, stereoscopic 3D and also regular 3D. Um, comments are a pretty important part of YouTube, but they can get out of hand, so you can limit who can who can comment on a video because you'll start getting, you know, what we call in the internet world trolling and flaming, um, and that's. Um, can be very annoying. So if you're just wanting to display a video for somebody to you know, ingest, like in a classroom situation, and don't want feedback on it, turn off comments. Make it so that people can't comment back. You're in a class, you're gonna hear from your students otherwise. Maybe you'll use discussion board and angel, so you can deactivate all of that. If it's something like a project that you're working on and you want people's opinions, be aware that anybody that's logged into YouTube can say what they want. Um, you can also switch it to comments that are approved, but that requires you to go in and do that. And I would say that can be um, a little annoying, especially if it's a popular video and you start getting flooded with emails saying new comment, new comment, new comment. So, um, so users can vote on, on comments. That means that they can basically mark them down or mark them up. Uh, eventually they'll go gray or disappear if they've been like downvoted enough times, it's kind of like you know, like in Facebook or uh, if you use Reddit, kind of the upvote or downvote for karma. Um, the user uh, can view ratings for this video, meaning that like how many times it's been liked, they can see that. If you don't want people to see that, like if you, especially if it's a video that's getting a lot of downvotes, you can hide the ability for the user to see that portion of your video. And uh, video responses is essentially somebody responding with another video to your video. So if you're making a statement of some sort or talking about a subject, you can open up the ability for people to, on your approval, to make a video response, you know, explaining their concern or appreciation for your video. Uh, cap caption certification, uh, this is stuff that we have to deal with a lot here on, um, on campus just because of, uh, of regulations, but we don't really mess with this a whole lot. This is stuff that um, has to do with like PBS and, and, and network material and so forth. There's, there's something about this I don't know anything about and I'm not going to lead you down a, um, uh, a, a false uh, tunnel on this. So if you wanna know more about that, then go for it. I leave it just as the select one and we upload captions. So we've never actually altered this at all. Um, I don't know what to tell you there. 
Um, and then also the distribution, distribution options. This will allow people to take their video that are public and embed them. Uh, so that would be maybe on their blog, their web page, uh, wherever they want to use it in a classroom situation. So if you don't want other people taking your videos that you've made and put on YouTube that may be public and using them in other places, you need to uncheck that because they can embed them into other classes or whatever else. Uh, the video location and recording dates uh, allows you to uh, change um, the, it's, it's just essentially the metadata, of it's, like, it's like geotagging, so. And obviously I said 3D, that's something that's not used a whole lot of right now, so. And that's like 3D, like, you know, like your flat screen uh, Samsung 3D type 3D, so. Um, so moving on out of all these settings, and like I said, these are advanced settings, you know, they're kind of set to like a normal default, which is, you know, allow all comments, you users can vote, and all those kind of things. The typical YouTube experience. So I'm gonna save that. And maybe we can go back to the video. So view video on the page. Yep. Ah, it was too long. I'm not a full, like, I don't I don't pay for like extended time, so. I guess it was over the 11 minutes and 59 second mark, I think is what the maximum video length is for a personal video. And that's something we should talk about. Uh, most people uh, will apply for a longer video study. If you really have like 30 minute long, hour long lectures that you want to put up on your personal YouTube page, then you can do that. And there are ways to do it. Um, and most of them cost money. If you want us to host those videos on the YouTube page under the official JCCC video, then you can talk to the EdTech Center or video production uh, does a lot of that and we'll get that uploaded for you. Um, I, I should you know, mention most people use like short form videos or they break it up part one, part two, part three, part four. If you're using something like Camtasia uh, Studio to make videos and you wanna put them up on YouTube, uh, you can probably uh, quickly figure out there's ways that you can export a portion of the timeline and then the next portion of the timeline and et cetera. You, know, you can break it all up. Uh, and then have multi-part videos. So if you set them all to eight minute chunks, it'd be easy to deal with. It's also nice to pace people along that way, I think, instead of having you know, an hour long video, especially if they lose track where they are, uh, you, know, you could always you know, write down the time you're at and go back to that, but it's easier just to add part one, two, three, four, so. Um, that's a bummer. I'm gonna go, um, Quickly, I'm going to mute the screen and I'm going to log into the JCCC account if I can. Actually, you know what? Let's not do that. Just because I know there's a lot of videos on there that we don't want to see. Let's go. short video. I think that's what hung up its processing is because of that. So let's go back, go to video, and that way we can continue on. I would show you videos that we've already used in the JCCC video page, but I fear that there's things in there that are set to private and I can't show the whole group, so. And let's also set this to private. We'll wait for a minute. I don't need to add any of that. What I want to show you next is actually adding the um, uh, captioning. It's fairly simple, um, but just to talk about that while it's uploading, you really need to sit down, uh, play the video. Uh, we have people who are on campus actually have like a foot pedal and like an, a proper setup to actually start and stop video while they're transcribing, but bring up the video, kind of make it small up in the corner of the screen you, know, you can put it up here, and then have Word open here. Play a little bit, type it out. Play a little bit, type it out. It seems you know long and time consuming, and it is, and that's how they do that. And in fact, uh, 
like PBS has all their stuff sent off to this like huge office building in DC that people there's just like rows of people like you know imagine like the most nightmarish um, office situation people just sitting there watching videos and transcribing um, that that is how they do that they also do it in real time for actual like live broadcasting too but if you want to make sure that your um, you know anybody that's disabled in any way can view uh, or hear or read your video, you need to do so. Um, there's, Vince Miller has been, he kind of pushed forward on that uh, when he came uh, to the EdTech Center saying that we need to do this. It's something that kind of got left behind. So every video we do goes to a department here. Uh, I can't remember who's taking it over at this moment. Do you know? You don't know. Um, and they, they go through every video that we do. It takes a while, and they get up on YouTube before they actually have the closed captioning, but eventually uh, we get like a batch of new ones back, and we go through and we upload them all up, and it's, it's just important to do that. Um, but each one of them is typed out, and I can show you. We save them as a regular text file. And... Uh, so this is a video for uh, just fractions and addition uh, that's available. Uh, I think it's actually on YouTube. I'm positive it is. Um, it's, a, it's typed out in regular paragraph format. We actually don't even need this. This is something that they add in just themselves. But essentially, it's looking at just that information. And what it can do is, is it knows, you know, it can, it can guess that at this time, the person says, how many yards, and it's like, I'm pretty sure that's what it says, and it uses, it goes through and it finds points where it thinks it lines up perfectly, and then basically extrapolates, extrapolates where, you know, between that word and that word that it's positive of, all the other words line in. It's not perfect, sometimes you'll see maybe a word come up before it's actually said, but it, it's at least all of the, actu the accurate text. So they go through and they listen to it and they type it down, and I think they go back and then watch and read at the same time, making sure that, you know, they've gotten everything right. So, uh, obviously you don't need to do this for your own home personal videos, but for everything here that may be presented in a classroom situation, you can't always be sure that a person can hear or, you know, see or whatever it is that's happening on screen. So, most of the time we just have actual what's said, but in a lot of instances um, there may be things uh, seen. We don't have uh, a lot of blind students uh, at all, I don't think, um, but we do actually have a few uh, blind faculty members that must have things described, you know, and, and situations described. And that's what you would see like in special brackets. So, um, let's see if that's where it needs to be. Camtasia? It does, yeah, it, and, and so does quite a few other pieces of software. There's also Dragon Speak, I think is what it's called, uh, but it, it, it's not perfect. It's, you know, it's electronic. It's like a, you know, it's, it's guessing for the most part. Google's is pretty good, but I've had it say some really crazy stuff. I actually use Google Voice for all my voicemail, and it sends me a email showing what was said, and like, you should see, I, apparently it does not like my wife's you know, voice or whatever, because it comes up with like the craziest things. It's like, it starts off like, could you go to the grocery store and get me? And it's like, falls apart after that. So I'm always kind of like, what do you want? So uh, you can only imagine, you know, what would happen with video. And also, I mean, it really relies on somebody to be speaking clearly, uh, a single person. When it starts getting into conversations, groups, background noise, can you imagine how hard it would be for it to actually transcribe that? So you could do that, but be warned that you'll have to go back and actually read exactly what it said and make sure that it's right. You can also do that here. Uh, so this is up there. Camtasia. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's a part of desktop publishing uh, or part of that group that does it. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. You may want to talk to Vince Miller and request that he uh, maybe, you know, goes help, helps you through that process. And I know we've, we've done it for quite a few different departments, not just the videos that the EdTech Center has uploaded for YouTube. 
So, um, so here's the video as it should be, uh, what I tried to do earlier. And you see it has got all these options. Um, it's also 240, 360, and 480. Um, since I have a very base account, I can't upload the nice high definition videos. Uh, for most instances, the 480 video um, quality is good enough for regular you know, screen reading. But if it's like high detailed text or if you're like showing a screen capture, you want to make sure that you actually go through the trouble of like getting set up on the, uh, the higher end YouTube accounts uh, because you won't be able to read the text and so forth if it's very small. You know, if you do like a big screen capture of your nice big monitor in your office, I'm sure everybody here has, you know, at least like the basic, like most of these are going away is what I'm saying. Um, they have the most basic large monitor. That crunch down to this screen size is going to be impossible to read. So if you if you're like demonstrating like formulas and math and all that, good luck. Nobody's going to be able to read it. So, you know, go go through the trouble of upgrading your accounts. Uh, they have a bunch of different <coughs> options on there. Um, so I didn't add any descriptions. I didn't put any metadata in. But you can see that I have a view counter there. I have like a likes and dislikes counter there all the usual stuff and also comments. I can comment on my own video. You know, if people start like, you know, flaming on my video saying that it's, you know, horrible and, you know, I, I make bouquets terrible, um, then they could say that and I could, you know, vote it down. Other people could vote it down if they liked it, et cetera. So um, what I want to show, though, is what we're talking about is the, uh, well, the captions for the most part. So. It says, unable to generate automatic captions. So that's interesting. At times, this happens. I don't know what causes it to happen, but it does come up that way. It, d it decides at some point that something's wrong. It's too complicated. I can't figure it out. So it does this error. I see it, I would say, pretty rarely, though. But I can upload my own caption file. And you know that might sound scary. Like, I don't have a caption file. No, it's that text file that I just showed you earlier. Let me close that. Hit save. Now, I don't know how it's going to react to this because I don't actually have the captionings for this short video, but it'll give you options that we can walk through. So what I have is a transcript file. And this, in see, in the way you'll know is this includes time codes. The other one didn't. It's just pure block paragraph, something that you typed out while listening. So what we have is a transcript file, the other option. You tell it if it's English or Spanish or whatever language it possibly is. And then you can also name it. You can say, I'll say mine. There we go. And start the upload. Now, it's probably going to freak out because none of this is going to line up with any of that video. But once it's done, it's going to show up as a little box here that's going to say English mine. And instead of processing, it's going to have a little check mark next to it saying that's the one we're using. You may actually have transcribed it in English. Spanish and Mandarin and whatever else and have those all available and all running so that when somebody's actually watching the video, they can go to the main page and choose from here, which is not going to pop up because I don't have it. Let's go to another video and see. Video. I don't even know what that is. Let's quickly find one that has. Well, yeah. we'll do this much as we doesn't have it. Uh -huh. I believe most of these do. Yes. Okay. So you can see that it has the English track available there. If there was more than one track available that I uploaded, it would show you know Spanish and whatever else I named the tracks. It could also be commentary. You can actually be reading, if you wanted to, um, through other means, you can actually write into time codes and have commentary come up when you want it to. But it is not a transcript file. It's the other one that said, with time codes, it's a little trickier. You would actually have to say, at this time, at 00, zero one hour, uh, first minute, you know, first second, this notation comes up. And that's a little bit beyond the scope of this brown bag, but you could actually have commentary tracks and everything else. It doesn't have to be another language or, or whatever it is. But it has to be available there for people to choose, essentially. So um, you can turn it on. And English Transcribed is up. And 
Hopefully we can see some text come up. You guys want to do a ba basic income tax uh, class right now? Or? So there it is. Yeah, there was actually a typo there too. Well, come. <laughs> uh, so that's it. that's it. Um, that's that's what we're going to want on most things that we use in a classroom situation at JCCC, and everything that goes to the official channel is queued to at least get this at some point. Um, it's just uh, the right thing to do. So, something we should also talk about moving on out of that is that the other options that you'll see at the top of the screen uh, when you're actually looking at a video. The edit enhancements, audio, annotations, and cap uh, captions. Uh, edit is exactly what it is. It's a very basic uh, set of tools to change things. Um, for This is the, the information. Uh, you can change the uh, thumbnail, basically what's displayed before you start recording the video, or what's displayed when you do a YouTube search, like the little thumbnails that show up in the, the YouTube search. The, that's what you're going to see here. It gives you three random ones. You can also upload your own, um, and I don't think that's available to a basic account. I don't see it. Uh, we're able to, in the EdTech Center, upload a special thumbnail. We could actually make a thumbnail for it with like information on there if we want, and then upload it. The basic one, though, you just basically get three random stills. I've seen those change. I've logged out. A couple days later, I log in, and I see three better stills that I could choose from, so I choose a better one. Um, you also see the video URL, that's the short URL there. You also see all the previous information. So I can go back and change, I can add, I can rename it. Um, this horrible titling right here. Don't do that. Um, and uh, you know all the descriptions and everything else. I can also do things like enhancements, which I will argue to stay away from uh, forever and ever and ever, because nobody needs uh, to make their video sepia toned or uh, thermal or anything else, but you could. Uh, you can also do uh, basic editing through this uh, and very basic edits. So I'm talking about trimming the beginning and trimming the end, not like nonlinear editing where you're like taking the section out of the middle and moving it to the end. They may add that in the future. Um, the auto fix and brightness and contrast, which are up here on the top, um, work sometimes and also at times do horribly bad things to your video. Uh, I would do that in something else. I would go find somebody, a video specialist, and have them help you fix your dark video or, uh, you know, whatever it is. The, the, the video that's blown out while you were outside shooting and you forgot to set it on auto gain control or something else. And then you also have fine tune lighting and color. Like I said, it's pretty, pretty basic. And uh, it's got your color, saturation, contrast. I would stay away from this unless you really know what you're doing. Um, I have seen people, I mean like desaturation is kind of nice because people tend to have their saturation on their computer monitors way jacked up, so to be able to like bring it down a little bit so it doesn't look like it's glowing on the screen can be nice. Um, and also color temp, you know, if you, if you know what you're doing there too, if you shot it outdoor but you um, had it set, your camera set for like a tungsten lighting situation or fluorescent, uh, you can adjust the color temp. If that is Greek to you, then don't worry about it. Somebody else can help you with that. Uh, stabilization's new, uh, and I haven't experimented with it. Um, it basically will go through frame by frame, and it is a lengthy process, and figure out it, which direction the camera is moving while you were holding your shaky little camera or your phone and recording whatever it was you were recording. And it'll zoom in a little bit on the picture. It'll zoom in a little and then start motion mapping it so that it tries to keep whatever it was you were looking at a little bit more stabilized and in the middle of the screen. It does an okay job, but there's professional software and there's professionals here on campus to help you do that. So um, down here is that trim function I was talking about, the basic editing. And that's, that's about it. Uh, you do have revert to original. That's new, and that's kind of nice uh, to be able to get out of all those horrible things you may have done to your video and get back to the original. Um, and then you also have save functions up here, and you can do a save as, so you may have your really, you know, okay, normal, original version, and then your crazy version, you can save it as, you know, like, you know, my video affected version or something like that. Um, the next thing. No. That would be really scary. <laughs> um, 
Or fun, yeah. Uh, I think that's what the comment section is. Yeah. Um, but no, you can't do that. Um, you yeah. also can't edit when you don't want to. Can you? Like if you just like part of a clip, you know, you can't edit somebody else's clip. Well, you're technically, depending on the licensing, you're not supposed to touch the video at all. There are tools, but I won't show you how to get video off of YouTube. Yeah, I, I know. I'm not outside of tools. But yeah. Just in YouTube itself. Yeah. Um, so here's a bunch of tracks that are available for your videos that are free to use. Now, this is only within the YouTube situation. It's not like you can take the video out after doing that and then put it on your DVD and start selling it to people. This is within YouTube only. Um, you know, some of them are pretty good. I mean, there, there's, you know, some nice tracks that would be decent background music. So you could search through this and add some background music to your video that's lacking that flavor that you need. Um, there's just a bunch of, you know, top tracks, classical, country, electronic, you know, et cetera. So you'd also search, says 1,500, I mean, 15, whoa, 150,000 tracks total. Um, but like I said, this is just within YouTube. A lot of people use this to, um, you know, you see like, you know, younger kids making, you know, silly home videos or whatever. We'll use this kind of stuff. So you'll start hearing the same good tracks over and over again. Uh, I would suggest maybe looking for something a little bit more original um, outside of that that actually has the ability to use licensing-wise outside of YouTube wherever you need to use it. Um, so, yeah. Um, again, you got to save and everything else there. Uh, Annotations, these are kind of nice. And it's something I haven't experimented enough with, but it allows tricky things like adding a little pop-up box that comes up that allows you to click here and take you to episode two. Or have you not watched episode one yet? Click here and it'll take you back. So what it is is a small timeline at the bottom that allows you to place where you want the pop-up to come up. So we can go to like the, two, well, after it buffers. So you can place it and then go add new annotation and you've got speech bubble, text, title, spotlight, label, and pause. Um, essentially you can make you know, the video stop midway through that. Um, I'll just do like a simple speech bubble, actually a note. And do this here, make a link. Oh, yeah. Private accounts, you can't post to something outside of YouTube for, you know, obviously malicious reasons. Could be, you know, or it could be all kinds of horrible stuff could happen. But we'll say to youtube.com slash jccc video. Let's see if that works. YouTube. Let's say that. Okay. And Sounds good. Okay, and then we can also adjust how long that's up. So you can drag the edge of this out and say that, so we've got two minutes here and four minutes here. We'll say for one minute, that little pop-up stays up on the screen. And then I can also change where it's at. And uh, let's see, what you can change the background color. It's gonna be transparent. I'll make it yellow and I'll make the text color black and font size 16. How about that? And hit save, and then publish. And we can go look at that, see if it works. So that was at around two minutes. Yeah, there it is. So it's kind of dimmed out and transparent, and then when you hover over it, it gets more opaque, and you can click there. It takes you to the JCCC video homepage. So you can use that to get around to other videos, to take you back to the homepage, to take you to a playlist of videos that you've created. We should talk about that. Um, but, you know, we're running out of time. Um, so that's basic, th those are the basic tools for, you know, your edits, enhancements, audio, annotations, and captions. Analytics, uh, we can get into is essentially stats on that particular video and who's watched it, where did they come from, what referral, like did they search it on YouTube or did they search it in Google or did they link in from another website? That's that information there. 
And real quick, if I can squeeze it in, in the video manager, is once you get a whole collection of videos, you can actually create a playlist with them. You can make a new playlist and say, my classes. And then you can add a description in there if you want to and hit create playlist. And then you can start adding by going back either by doing it from here. Uh, so we'll make it a private playlist and we'll keep it like that. And let's go back to the video manager. I can actually go to my uploads and then I can add uh, check market and add to the ones I want to the playlist that I've created. So if you want to have video sets, you can go through and you can group them together. Go to my classes. So they've, they've been added. And then we can go back to those playlists. And then we can embed the playlist somewhere. So th there's embed files. Um, uh, where do they keep that at? Share. So you've got embed, email, and then share on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. But this would allow you to embed a playlist of videos. Remember I said you had to make like smaller videos, eight minute chunks? Well, that would allow you to then group them together into the full class or the full discussion or the full week or whatever it is, and then embed the playlist of videos inside your angel course. So that's all I got. It also shows your how many videos are in it in the duration. So if you're just curious about how long it would get, you know, to be to get through all the videos, you can see the entire length. So that was a lot more than I thought I was going to talk about. All right. So that was my little whirlwind uh, YouTube video presentation. Questions? Do you upload the embed information the same way with this, or do you do the embed information and then you would have it on the JCC server? In other words, in your HTML file? It's different, actually. Uh, so that you're embedding using the JW player that we have that's our Flash media player. In this situation, um, you'll see embed code if you click on this, and it's an iframe. So you're going to paste this in, in the same way in Angel that you would, but you would just use this code. So it's that little chunk of HTML there would be copied. And then you go into Angel, and you go to Add Content. And it can be inside of a discussion, but prefer, like most people use it in a page. So they make a new page. And then you have like your little like bar of editing tools there. You click on the one that's called Source. It's the one in the bottom uh, right-hand corner. And then you get like the raw HTML mode. Paste it in there, hit Save, and there you go. It's in. Yeah, but that, that code, the code there is for our JW player, right, Flash player. Code, yes, same, same thing process, yeah. Okay. Uh, good point, yeah, because we're a secure server, and otherwise it'll have a certificate error, and you can still get to it if the student knows what they're doing, but there's a good chance they'd be like, I can't watch your videos, and you'll get you know all these emails of angry students. So, so. Edit that code, No, you just click that use so HTTPS. There's a few other things here you can choose the size, but they can always, it's not the size of the videos, it's the, the size of the embed uh, iframe. So you could, you know, you can make that any size you want, but the student can still full screen the video and watch it, you know, at its original format. So if you did like a 1080p HD video and you uploaded it with a, um, a pro account, then you could have all of that stuff there. You could also make it custom, like if you know exactly how wide, like say maybe you're using, um, um, Oh, what's the tool everybody uses for like doing like little short presentations in Angel? Uh, chalkboard, no, soft chalk. Uh, you could actually, if you know exactly how big your soft chalk presentation <laughs> is, uh, if there's some sort of size res restraints, you could create the perfect size to fit inside of your soft chalk presentation. So, um, there's enable piracy enhanced mode. I don't know anything about that either, so I, I've never seen that. I don't. There are ways to get around everything. If somebody wants to take your video, they probably can. So uh, you can maybe activate it, and maybe the dumb pirates won't get it, and the smart pirates will. So. No. Actually, I'm, I'm curious about what that is. Oh, OK. It's like a cookies protection. I'll let you read up on that if, you, if you're worried about it. Um, that's that's all I've got. Probably too much. Sorry to like bomb you guys with a lot of information, but hopefully you uh, got something out of it that's useful.